Hey guys, this is Peter, and I've been having a great conversation with some people offline, and I thought, well, let's bring you guys into it. I might want to know what you think as well. So let me just jump right into it and tell you what we've been talking about, and that is that ATSC 3.0 might not happen at all. So let me go ahead and back that up with why I think that is, might be the case and uh, why it's a worthy conversation. So uh, first off, you know, when I'm not doing YouTube, I, uh, I'm a technologist, and what I do is planning an investment for companies. So I try to predict the future. So one of the ways you can predict the future is A, understand where the technology can take you. The next thing you wanna do is understand the motivations of the parties involved. So let's jump right there. ATSC 3.0, the reason that all of us consumers, myself included, would like to see it is we're looking for a better picture with better coverage and well, more freedom to do what we want. Well, what's the what's the motivation of the of the broadcaster, the people that own the content? Well, they want to be able to use a new feature of ATSC 3.0 that is encryption. They could have given you a better picture all along. They don't really care about that. What they want is control. So what they'd like to do is a control their content. I get that. They want to make sure it doesn't end up online or in the wrong markets. Okay, that's reasonable. But what they really want is control over you and your VCR. So they for, have already said that they'd like to be able to limit your recordings to 30 days so they can reach in your uh, VCR and delete things that you recorded previously. And I don't know if that's... Uh, that's what you're looking for. So are things aligning? And the bad thing about encryption is, well, they've already talked about a certification program and how it's gonna add a little bit of cost. So for a manufacturer, you just added cost and time for a feature that, this is so such a competitive market. A lot of the manufacturers are saying, we out, we're not gonna do this. So uh, LG's already pulled out, and I think that was a good move. Uh, and Samsung and Sony potentially could drop out. Yes, this article is about how they, they reached out to NextGen and they said, what, we haven't heard that at all. So I believe that to be true. However, they also reached out to Samsung and Sony and saying, do you care to comment? And there's been uh, crickets. So they haven't commented. And I think they're thinking about, yeah, maybe this isn't the best idea. It's such a competitive market. Samsung owns like 41% owns like of the TV market in the United States and it accounts for 8% of their revenue. That's the last time I looked. But uh, that shows you how competitive this market is. You want to add cost and time to it? No. That's a no. Companies like Tableau, they make TV tuners for hobbyists like ourselves. Uh, they have come out with a new version and guess what? It's brand new and it's ATSC 1.0. I think that was a good move. We talked about it. We talked about what it can do. I happen to like this product. I got more channels on a channel scan than on any other product and I'm gonna show you why and it's gonna lead to what I think will replace this all. So uh, on my channel scan, here I'm gonna pick a neighbor of mine because I live in an area and no one wants to see how many millions of channels I get. But I have some friends that live over the hill and over the hill, it's a 1600 foot mountain, I guess. And even though it's uh, you know only 40 miles from San Jose, they don't get our channels. They can't see San Francisco at all. So their channels are quite limited. If you had a TV tuner in Santa Cruz, you get much less. However, if you were to scan with the Tableau unit, you get a lot of channels because some of them are digital and those are called fast channels. And what fast channels are all about, there's where their towers are, they're not even near me. Fast stands for, it's an acronym. Free ad supported television, fast. There's already a ton of these channels. In fact, you've seen them on before on Pluto TV or on Tubi or even on Plex. Uh, Samsung Plus TV comes on your phone, has a bunch of channels. What it is is live TV content that's ad supported. So those are quite popular. Think about it. That gets you your motivators were to get a better picture with a uh, well, larger coverage area. If it comes over the internet, it's infinite coverage area. You can get them wherever you want. So that's pretty neat. And you get the freedom to record these because the Tableau Tuner allows me to record these fast channels, which is really exciting because I was unable to do that before. So yeah, this is more about fast channels. And yeah, here's, here's an example on my Plex. So Plex, there's a number of fast channels and as you can see, they are scheduled out but currently Plex does not allow me to click on something and record it. 
you know, they allow me to record things that I've tuned, but not record the fast channels. So if I imagine that you're just going to be able to add that and, and compete with the, the Tableau offering that it does already do that. But I see that as the future because now I'm getting the, I'm getting what I want. I'm getting my motivators, right? So I'm getting a better picture with better coverage area and more control. What does the advertiser get? They get something great too. They get you to self-identify. So now you're saying, I, I love history programs. I love crime programs. I, I love travel programs. I love cooking programs. Now they know, now they can advertise to you. You're a cook. You're a person that likes to cook. I'm going to advertise this to you. You're a person that likes to travel. I'm going to advertise this to you. So it has more value. Value to both sides. I think this is definitely the way that it's going to go. And I don't think ATSC 3.0 with its certification plans and increased costs is going anywhere. Social equity. It's one of the key reasons that the FCC allows over-the-air TV at all and why we're protecting it. Social equity. And what we learned from COVID was that the internet is no longer a luxury. It is, well, it's a necessity. Think about getting a job. How are you going to get a job? You're going to go get a paper? You're going to look at the one ads? You're going to pull out a typewriter and type something? No, it all goes over the internet now. That's the way that you do things. So for social equity, that really needs to happen. We all talk about voting online, and someday that's going to be a reality. And the only way that it can happen, if there's some social equity to the ability to vote, if everyone has the internet and everyone has the ability to vote from home, it'll totally happen. But right now, how can people get social equity as far as information? Through TV? Well, the best source of information, as we all know, is the internet. So I definitely think that we're going to see, as we saw during COVID, discounted prices for people to get the internet into their homes so they can educate their kids during a pandemic, for example, or so that you can work from home. Uh, work from home, I know a lot of people can't work from home all the time, but the ability to work from home in the event of a sick day or something or a shutdown, things happen. And, uh, and work from home is a nice option. If you can work from home, hey, that's one day a week. That would be a huge advantage uh, to a lot of employers. Well, now it's socially equitized that anybody can do it. And uh, I think that's the way that it's going to go. Maybe not everyone's going to have gigabit internet, but they're at least going to be able to have access to resources to find out what to do if your kid ate a chemical underneath the sink. Everyone needs to be able to find that. And everyone's kids deserve an equal chance at education. So there you go, guys. I really think that fast channels are the way and we are going to see internet become socially equitable. There you go, guys. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Give this thumbs up if you think it's a worthwhile conversation. Not that you necessarily agree with the results. But uh, hey, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Talk to you soon.